great crowd to be here with each and every one of you. And before I get started, uh, when I was getting ready to leave from my house, my uh, daughter came running out and she said that, uh, Dad, you, you got an email from uh, Congressman Ron Klein. So, uh, and I, and I said, well, well, what is it about? She said, it's his message that he wants you to share with the folks at the uh, Tea Party. So let me read you his, uh, his message. He says nothing. And that's why, in November of 2010, Ron Klein will be coming home because he does not speak for you. Let me tell you very simply. I've been called an Oreo. I've been called a token. I've been called a sellout. I've been called an Uncle Tom. And to all of those people that call me names, I want to tell you something. All that does is for an old paratrooper, it just makes him dig his heels in even more. I'm standing here with my American brothers and sisters. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with color. It's all about your character. in Washington, D.C. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going up there and I'm going to drain that cesspool. It is time to understand one very important thing about the United States of America. The United States of America in 233 years. Look at this great country. I've been to 13 different countries. I've been in three different combat zones. There is no other country greater than these United States of America. And the thing that built this great country, the thing that built America is not government. The thing that built America, each and every one of you that are standing out here right now, and your parents and your grandparents that afforded you those opportunities where you could be successful in this country. That is what we must continue to fight for, and God bless these young kids that are here right now. The most important thing that we have got to get reestablished in Washington, D.C., and indeed at state level and local level governments is a sense of fiscal security for the American people. Because investment, ingenuity, innovation, economic growth does not come from the public sector. It comes from the private sector. It comes from each and every one of you out here helping to build this great economy, helping to build this great country. But just last week, there was a very, very telling statistic that came out. 47%. 47% of Americans aren't paying taxes. But yet, 47% of Americans vote. So if you have the right type of government that is focusing on centralizing and controlling people instead of empowering people, you can get free health care. You can get free education. You can get a free car. You can get free whatever you want, appliances. But it'll all be on the backs of that other 53%. And that is not how America was established. America was established by each and every one of us, as we say back in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia, you gotta have some skin in the game. And if we continue to have a government which continues to create victims, and continue to make people dependent upon them. You will have a situation where we have Americans that want to sit at home and continue to get extended unemployment benefits instead of getting out and working. That's not the work ethic. And I see a sign that says, share my work ethic. That's exactly what we need to be doing. Sharing the work ethic, not sharing the wealth of this great country. If we're not careful, as the government continues to grow, because they have so many dependent upon them, they will continue to do the three things that you're not supposed to do in the economic situation in which we find ourselves. They'll continue to print more money, they'll continue to borrow more money, and they will continue to tax us to death. And that's why you're here. 
Right. Because T stands for taxed enough already. <laughs> we cannot live in a country where the next thing you know, the marginal tax rate will be 70%. We cannot live in a country where the progressive tax system that we have has now become a vehicle and a tool for class warfare, which will pit a production class against an entitlement class. And if it becomes 47%, what happens when it becomes 50%? And what happens when they make it 55%? There is no more money, and the production class stops producing. And that has been the paradigm all across the world when it comes to production class stopping to produce. Margaret Thatcher said it, and I said it when I spoke with Sean Hannity. Socialism is great until you run out of other people's money.